What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and this is The Walking Dead Season 9, Episode 4, The Obliged. So this was a pretty good episode, but it did leave me with a lot more questions than answers. Um, and mainly those questions relate to what's going to happen with Rick, what happened at the camp after the shootout, and also what happened with Anne after she left Father Gabriel. Um, and those questions will probably be answered in the next episode. Um, I do find it hilarious, though, watching it in hindsight now, knowing that Andrew Lincoln does leave the show. Because I feel like, and if anybody watching this, which probably not many people, but if anybody watching this can tell me if this were the case when it was airing, was Andrew Lincoln, like, rumored or confirmed to be off the show at this point, <laughs> like, during when this episode aired? Because I feel like if he wasn't, I feel like a lot of people would have just been sitting there going, okay, so how does he get out of it this time? What, did Daryl hear him scream he's going to come save him? Or the, the people that Anne was communicating with, do they take a helicopter and ride in and take out all the walkers? Like, what's going to happen? How is he going to get out of it? But if people were watching and it had already been confirmed or rumored that he was leaving the show, I feel like people would have been a lot more like, is this is he going to die here? Like, is, are those rumors true? Is, is he leaving the show? Is this it? Um... <laughs> but it's just, in hindsight, knowing what's going to come, I imagine, because, I mean, he's sitting on a piece of, what is it, like, block with the rebar going through, like, that, he's dead, there's no way, <laughs> like, it, it's a weird way for him to go out, I hope that this isn't how he goes out, it would be nice if Daryl, like, comes in and helps him fight off a few of them, and then he maybe goes down swinging, but I don't know, it just, this does feel like a weird way if this is how he dies, for him to leave the show. Because, <laughs> like I was saying, um, uh, when was this? I think it was Daryl. There was a point where it seemed like he might be dead or something like that. I just remember thinking, like, no, that's not how Daryl's going to die. Like, he's not going to die just sitting there getting taken out by some random walker or, you know, being taken down by somebody. He's going to go out in a blaze of glory if he's going to die. And I feel like Rick deserves the same respect you know he shouldn't just go out oh i got stabbed to the stomach i guess i'm gonna pass out and slowly get eaten by walkers in the middle of nowhere <laughs> i mean granted he did draw the walkers away from the camp so kind of a heroic thing but it still seems like a very weak death for him if this is what they're gonna do with it but yeah if this is how he goes though i do have to wonder what's gonna happen next you know because when I was thinking about the possibility of him leaving, I'm thinking, okay, is he going to sacrifice himself to save a bunch of people? Is he going to sacrifice himself to, I don't know, this bridge thing? Is, is there something with that that he's going to sacrifice himself for to keep the bridge going? And he even talked about in this episode, like if, or, was it him? Yeah, he was talking to Daryl about it. He's like, if Negan dies, if we kill him, then he just becomes a martyr for his people. And I kind of assumed that Rick would kind of get a similar death where he sacrifices himself to save all these people and they're like, well, maybe we should live together to honor his memory because he saved us. But if this is how it happens, well, then it's Maggie and Daryl's fault. You know, Maggie for going after Negan when she clearly shouldn't be and then Daryl for leading him astray to keep him from stopping Maggie and then tackling him into a hole and eventually forcing the walkers to... <laughs> get in the way so yeah it just it feels as though they're setting it up for me to not like Maggie and Daryl although the scenes with them in the hole and Daryl talking to him the way the music was going it did sort of make it seem like no guys Daryl is right Negan was wrong here and he wasn't <laughs> you know because that that is the point after all of the fighting there had to be something else you know and Look at The Last of Us 2. Spoilers if you haven't played it. But the main point of that story was at the end, Ellie had the chance to kill Abby, but she didn't because she realized revenge isn't the way. Because Joel went and killed all these doctors for revenge, and then Abby went and killed Joel for revenge for her father, and then Ellie goes and takes out all of her friends... <laughs> trying to get to her for revenge for Joel, and then she goes and kills one of Ellie's closest friends trying to kill her for revenge. So it's like all of the revenge just costs so many lives around them that Ellie finally realized, I need to break this cycle. In this way, it's very similar. You know, you've got this cycle of Negan's in charge, he's so evil, he's doing all these awful things, he's trying to control these people's lives. 
well, if Rick just comes in, takes him out, well, now he's in control, and he's the one that's essentially Negan. He's taken over. You know, the people that really worship Negan and support him would come after him, and then they would essentially try to take him out and try to take out his people as well. And it would just keep going back and forth. So what Rick did was the right choice to try to break this cycle of violence and uh, trying to avenge each other, basically. Um, so... Yeah, I just, I'm really frustrated with what they're doing with Maggie and Daryl. I feel like it's a real detriment to their characters. It makes them, I mean, it's not like I don't get Maggie's point of view. I get why she wants Negan taken out. But to go against Rick like this and to backstab him and Daryl, you know, lead him the wrong path, tackle him into a hole, and now he might be dead because of what Daryl did, yeah, it's frustrating. It's it's frustrating that they decide to make them make this decision, the writers. Um, so... A little frustrated there. Uh, the one scene that I really did like in this episode, though, was the one between Michonne and Negan. Because it really... I, I've heard, unfortunately, it's something I've been spoiled on, I've heard that Negan does stick around on the show, so I know Maggie's not going to kill him, which does make beg the question, what's going to happen to Maggie then? <laughs> She's going to go try to kill him. Is he going to kill her instead? How's that going to work? Um, I'm pretty sure I've seen Maggie on the show more recently, though, so I, I don't think she dies, but... Anyways, um, no, but it does get me excited to see more of Negan because he's such an interesting character. Like, obviously, he's a bad guy. What he does is awful. He's a horrible human being, but he's so interesting. <laughs> like, whenever he's talking, whenever he's on screen, I'm engaged. I love watching his performances because they're so much fun. Like, he's such a good villain to have, and the way he speaks... It kind of reminds me, if you've ever seen a show called Justified, it reminds me a bit of Boyd Crowder. You know, Boyd was a bad guy. You know, he was basically the main antagonist slash best friend of the main character. And so all of their talks and any time Boyd was on screen and he was in his moment, in his element, it was so much fun to watch. Uh, Walter Goggins, if you know the actor, played the part brilliantly. And Jeffrey Dean Morgan, very similarly here, I don't really like... Negan and what he does, but I can't help enjoying whenever he's on screen. Like, he's such a good villain to have, and I don't know if he's going to stay a villain if once he gets out of here. I'm assuming he's getting out pretty soon, or if he is going to start maybe helping the group. Because, um, again, I do know about the other group that's, like, disguising themselves as walkers. Um, or maybe the group that Anne is talking to is going to become like kind of the bigger threat or maybe that is the the people she's talking to or the people that disguise themselves as walkers but i just i love that scene though where he's talking to michonne he's essentially trying to figure out her deal and honestly some of the stuff michonne is going through is very interesting to me like i don't really get it at the moment i guess what they're trying to show is that yes she is doing all this stuff she's trying to build a community she's trying to essentially start a civilization again by putting together all these rules and trying to help, you know, the kids grow up and helping Judith grow up in a society where everything's normal. But that's not really what she wants to do, which is why she sneaks out at night and goes and t cuts down walkers all the time. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of, that was the sense I was getting from it. I don't know if that's what they were trying to show us. But I'm curious to see what they're going to do with that, because they definitely drew that connection. You know, Negan noticed the connection between himself and her. So I don't know what they're planning there, but I'm excited to see more of it. Um, yeah, so I think that's about it for this episode, though. I mean, obviously, you know, there, there's a lot of other stuff that happened, but most of it I'm just like, yeah, it was good, but I don't really have anything important to say about it. So we're moving on <laughs> on to the next episode. I'll see you there. And now, episode five, what comes after? I'll admit this one got me a little choked up. Um, yeah, I mean, again, I kind of figured this was probably going to lead to what leads to Rick leaving the show. Um, but this, for me, this is exactly the type of ending for a character I would want to see. Now, granted, as we saw, not quite dead. I don't know what they plan to do with this. We still have no idea what's going on with Anne and the people that picked her up. And maybe we'll figure out more about that this season. Or maybe that'll be something that gets explained way down the line. Um, but I did know, just because, I mean, Netflix kind of spoiled it. Because the 
<laughs> literally in the description of this episode, it says six years later, so I saw that, and I'm thinking, okay, so we're going to jump into the future, and it actually ends in this episode with six years later. We see Judith walking up like a badass, like the little ass kicker that she is. <laughs> I will admit, like, it was kind of goofy, but I still loved it. You like, just... Something about that scene. It's hilarious to see this little girl sitting there putting this huge gun that's like as big as her head <laughs> into a holster, picking up the hat. I'm Judith Grimes. It's just like it was it would be so silly to see that in real life. But something about this, I'm like, you know what? It kind of works. It it fits. Um, especially knowing who her parents were. So but no, all in all, I thought this was pretty solid. I liked the scene where we get to see Rick really just find that fight again. <laughs> like, it, it was really badass, and I appreciated the fact that it wasn't some Deus Ex Machina that came out of nowhere, like, oh, Rick, I followed you this whole time, and I'm saving you. It was just his pure fight, his pure will to keep himself alive. Um, and throughout most of the episode, you know, it was kind of... I liked the vagueness of what they were trying to show. Like, he feels like he's searching for his family, like, trying to find Carl and Lori... But all along, his family had been all around him. And it's something I feel like should have been known, but I liked kind of what, I guess, how it was handled and showing that his battle to try to lead these walkers to the bridge, to try to take it down, it's to protect everybody. You know, the family that he has now. Um, I will say it was a little weird that it started with him trying to not lead them to the bridge because he wants to keep the bridge built because it's, I guess, a monument to what he has tried tried to do, you know, trying to connect these people, even if they don't really want to be connected. Um, so it, it was a little weird to see him suddenly decide, you know what, never mind, I'm just going to take out the bridge and lead all these walkers to it. But at the same time, it was very appropriate because it does sort of show that it, the bridge itself is not Rick's legacy. It's the people that he's saving by leading all these walkers to their death and to this river. Um, so yeah, all in all, it was a it was a very good episode with everything to do with Rick. The stuff with Negan, I'm a little... I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying I don't like it. Like, it was interesting to see as soon as he gets brought into the light, as soon as Maggie is like... It's almost like she's questioning, why is he trying to force my hand so much? Because he really was. Like, as soon as she came in, he was talking all big. He was talking about killing... Oh, your husband. What was his name again? Like, that whole scene. You could tell he's clearly trying to just get her to kill him. And I liked how they set it up because Maggie, she's not stupid. And so seeing that he's trying to get her to kill him, like, I like the fact that it wasn't just, oh, okay, yeah, he's goading me. I'm just going to give in to it and just kill him right now. She wanted to see what was going on. And so seeing him come to light, seeing him being very pathetic and just wanting to die, it was very different. And it showed that this Negan persona that he puts on, it's not all that he is. Like, it's something that I think he's done to survive. He just, he presents himself as always in control, even if he's very clearly not, because it's what's kept him alive. And even in this moment where he wants to die, he's still trying to use that Negan persona to get people to kill him, to piss them off enough to take him out. It even makes me want to go back and watch those scenes where he's talking to Rick and talking to Michonne, and obviously there were lines that very clearly showed he was trying to, you know, to prod them a little bit. But I do wonder, was he really trying to just get them to kill him? Or like Michonne mentioned in the last episode, was he trying to find something worth living for? Um, so yeah, I, I really liked that scene though. I just, I don't know how I feel about seeing Negan all like pathetic and crying. I want to die. And he just didn't seem... <laughs> it seemed like they wanted to go so far the opposite way with him that they almost went a little too much to the point where I'm just like, okay, now he just seems like a a kid. <laughs> just like, please kill me. Um, and I, granted, again, I do think it makes him more interesting because it shows he has layers past the Negan persona, but I don't want to see him just like so pathetic that it makes him less cool as a character. <laughs> um, so I, I don't know. We'll see what they decide to do with him from here. I wonder where he is six years later. Like, is he still in prison all this time? Or did they eventually let him out and 
try to get him integrated into society. I'm really curious to see what it looks like now. You know, with everybody working together, clearly the walkers are still a very big deal because they're still a huge herd trying to take down these random people. Um, but I, I'm, I'm curious to see what exactly has happened since all the stuff that we've seen. You know, ha- have the saviors started working with everybody else? Is Sanctuary just sort of cut off still? Did they rebuild the bridge again? I don't know. And we honestly, I mean, we never saw what happened in that shootout that happened at the camp. You know, we saw a couple of walkers. I think the one girl that was on the horse, I don't remember who she was. And then I think one of the guys, maybe, I don't think Jed was one of the walkers that was there. I don't think. But clearly, you know, there was some sort of shootout. There were people that probably died. And I don't think we ever really confirmed exactly what happened there. So after all of that, would the saviors be able to work with everybody else? Would the other people feel like they could trust them? I don't know. And it's it's definitely set up for very interesting questions to be asked in the future as far as how does this world work now? Now that Rick is gone, did everybody find it in them to work together because of him? Or is it something where because he wasn't there, there was no real leader in place to keep everybody kind of functioning and working together and so now it's sort of everybody's separated everybody's doing their own thing at hilltop at alexandria at the kingdom i'm I'm definitely curious and i feel like it's it's grabbed my interest in a way that i didn't really expect the show to grab it i kind of expected to just sort of finish out you know watch seasons nine and ten and just sort of be like okay you know they're clearly just riding on the fumes and they're trying to milk this show for all it's worth but i feel like they have presented some interesting questions and I don't know when those questions are going to be answered, if they'll be answered, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing what's coming next. So on to episode six. I'll see you there. And now episode six, who are you now? Uh, so pretty much kind of what I was expecting based on how this episode was set up, you know, with the new group coming in, Judith trying to help them. Everybody's like, oh no, I don't know. It's against the rules. And Michonne like coming in, no, we don't trust you. And finding this one girl has a knife on her and apparently went to prison and all that. From that premise, I kind of figured it was going to be a situation of, by the end of it, Michonne realizes maybe it's not the worst thing to trust people again. And this group, they were either going to show that secretly they were trying to backstab them or that they're actually good people. Uh, By the way, kind of funny because watching uh, Fantastic Beasts, and I, I do wonder if... I can't remember what the actor's name is. I want to say it's Don. The guy that plays Jacob in Fantastic Beasts and plays Luke here. Definitely my favorite part of the Fantastic Beasts movies, because they're not great (laughs) compared to the Harry Potter series. But I I like his character, and I'm wondering if he's going to be as good here. So far, he's been pretty solid, but I've not seen the same, like, joking type of person, which I guess makes sense because this is the apocalypse, but... (laughs) um, yeah, so far, I, I do like this group. I like their their camaraderie. You know, you got the one girl who's deaf, and then um, essentially you got the other in the group that understands and is able to communicate and all that. Um, <clears throat> but I do want to get to know more about them. They seem like they're going to be important for this second half of the season, but I really don't know. They What's interesting is that they talked about, like, those sickos are after us. Now, that could just be, you know, because nobody calls them zombies in this world. They always have their term for it. So maybe that's their term for the walkers. But there is a chance, because we see at the end of, the end of this with Eugene and Rosita, we finally see our first glimpse of this new enemy that I've, again, I know about where essentially they pretend to be walkers and they, like, cover the... I, I don't know exactly how they work. I just know that I've seen the promotional artwork of somebody who looks like a walker but is actually still human. But we finally get a first sense of that with Eugene and Rosita hiding themselves and hearing the walkers start whispering to each other. I'm assuming that's what is happening. So, But I'm wondering, though, is that group also responsible for what's happening to these people that showed up at Alexandria? Like, are they trying to track them down? Did maybe they escape? I don't know. Um, and they never really talked about anything to do with that. So they could have just been referring to the walkers. But that's just, it's something that came to mind whenever they, they didn't say, like, the monsters or anything like that. They said the sickos. And that just made me think they were talking about real people. But I guess we'll see 
if they have any connection. Um, but overall, I mean, it's a it was a good setup. I, I like how they handled it. It was very realistic. For me, the highlight of the episode, though, has to be Judith. Like, this little girl is crushing this role. That scene with her and Negan was so good. <laughs> Just from Negan trying to be like, math doesn't matter in this world anymore. Like, who, who cares? <laughs> but then she turns his little story around, talking about the stray dogs. She's like, oh, and so you wised up look at you now and I'm just like damn okay this is really Rick's well what's funny is it may not even be Rick's daughter it could be Shane's daughter but still it's really funny to see how much she's grown up and how capable she is now even though she's still so young so yeah I, I like those scenes with her though I feel like they did a really good job of casting her um, the other highlight for me was still Carol like she's been one one of my favorite characters for sure throughout all the seasons because of how well she plays this really like timid character you know weak I, I don't want to hurt anybody even in this it's like oh no I, I didn't want to do anything to them because I wanted to protect you and then the very next scene with her she's burning this whole group of uh, leftover saviors alive <laughs> I'm just like oh no okay so Carol is still very much Carol <laughs> uh, so it was just it was a great moment for her because it really did I kind of wondered since she has been with Ezekiel for so long I did wonder if maybe they were going to essentially what's the word I'm looking for like knock not knock her down but like I guess make her a little less <laughs> willing to kill a little less vicious and aggressive just because I mean when you're living comfortably for so long you kind of lose that side of yourself and especially because she's been with Ezekiel who again is very kind of goofy and out there I wondered if that was going to change her much, but from what I can tell so far, she's still the exact same. Like, she played off the whole thing where Henry is trying to attack them and she's trying to protect him. And the next thing you know, nope, <laughs> she's she's back. She's back to doing what she does. Uh, also, a little interesting tidbit I found out, because in looking up uh, the actor now that's playing Henry, I wanted to check and see if that was Bruno for Miss Marvel, and it is. He looks pretty much the same, um, <laughs> even because... This was four years ago, and now in Miss Marvel he looks pretty much the same. But what's interesting, I wanted to check to be sure, because I didn't really remember Henry, what he looked like. I'm like, okay, they did definitely change the actor, right? Like, they didn't just make him look a bit older. Turns out, the guy, or the kid that used to play Henry, and then now this guy, Bruno, they're brothers. I'm like, okay, good decision. Good decision to choose brothers to play younger Henry and older Henry. That's... Very, very good show. <laughs> I'm glad that they did that so that way it still looks very similar. It still looks like Henry because they do in real life too, probably. Um, but yeah, no, I like what Henry has become now. He's a bit older, still a little young and naive, but he's a fighter and he wants to help. He wants to try to essentially start getting this world going again. And I do think they showed a little bit as well that after Rick died um essentially this world it did sort of come back apart you know the kingdom is now on its own the hilltop is on its own alexandria is on its own sanctuary apparently just fell apart and they never rebuilt the bridge so it sort of shows that they're st you know they're friends they'll still be there for each other probably but they're not going to be the functioning society or civilization that michonne and rick were trying to build it's going to be kind of back to everybody for themselves again. So, um, yeah, I, I wonder if we're going to start to see that they do want to start pushing towards that again, especially because it seems like Michonne was probably one of the big losses from that. Like, after Rick died, I think she really went back inside of herself and decided, nope, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, so I wonder if, if she decides to change her mind back to what it was earlier this season. I wonder if that's how they start getting back on the track to, no, we want to actually build a world. We want to build a civilization again, not just doing our own things to survive, like apparently they have been for the past six years. Uh, but yeah, going to see Hilltop, it'll be interesting to see what they do with Hilltop now. Like, is Maggie still kind of a little bit lost, a little bit <laughs> hesitant to trust anybody? I don't know. I, I felt like after what happened with Negan, maybe she would lose a little bit of that frustration with what happened with the Saviors, but maybe she still is a little 
vindictive <laughs> is the best term I can think of. Um, I don't know if she's going to be the type of person that's just going to trust and be like, oh yes, bring these new people in here. And I honestly don't know, since Michonne clearly does seem to trust these people now after what this Magna girl did, giving her their final weapon. Um, I, I was unsure as to why she didn't maybe say, all right, we'll try to let you live here. Why is she taking them to Hilltop instead? Is it because there's more vacancy at Hilltop, or is it because there's something here in Alexandria that she doesn't want them to get access to? Um, I don't know if that's going to be explained or not, but it's just a question that popped into my mind at the end of the episode. <sighs> I'm trying to think what else. I will say I didn't think there could be a weirder couple than Anne and Fa Father Gabriel. Um, Rosita and Father Gabriel, though, that's definitely a weird one. I, I don't know what it is about Father Gabriel. <laughs> Man of the Cloth, I guess that's attractive. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, not, not that I have anything, like, against... Like, I don't really know how he looks. I don't know if he's attractive or not. But he just... He doesn't seem like the type that women would just fall for. <laughs> and this is two that are just really taken to him. And I'm just... I don't know. They, they don't seem like the type that would fall for him. But who knows? I, I don't know what I'm talking about, apparently. Because this is what they decided. This is what the writers decided would be most realistic. Is to put Rosita and Father Gabriel together. Because that makes sense. Although Rosita and Eugene, that they were also, like... I mean, Eugene has always sort of, I think, felt a connection to her, and you could sort of tell that he finds her attractive, and he might be interested in her, but I don't think she's ever felt anywhere close to that about Eugene. I did love the scene, though, <laughs> where he's, like, sitting there against the tree. He's like, just go on without me. Something I really wanted to tell you all this time. Don't make it weird. Let's go. <laughs> and just drags him along. <laughs> that scene was hilarious. But, um... No, I don't really know why they decided to put those two together, but it just didn't feel quite right <laughs> as they're doing it. Um, but, yeah. I mean, all in all, it's a pretty solid episode to kick off this new storyline six years later. A lot of mystery, a lot of intrigue building. And I do want to see where everybody is. I want to know more about why is Daryl out on his own. I want to know more about how the kingdom is doing. Apparently they're not doing great because they keep having busted pipes. Um, but how how is Hilltop doing? Are they thriving still or are they starting to struggle? A lot of good questions that I think are building. And on top of that, they still have the big mystery of who the hell are the people that Anne <laughs> took Rick to see. Um, I don't think that one's getting answered for a while, though, because I think... I'm pretty sure Andrew Lincoln, like, he was off the show. Either for good or... Again, I don't know if he came back at the end or not. Actually, I don't even know if the show has technically ended. I'm pretty sure it has. I'm pretty sure season 11 is already wrapped up. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if he is going to come back at all. If they're going to be like, oh, yeah, we saved him. Here he is. And this is what we were doing this whole time with him. Um, so, we'll see what happens next, though. But that's it for these three episodes, so let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on these three episodes? Let me know what you can talk about and discuss. All that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for future Walking Dead reviews, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.